Hello, I would like to welcome you to this edition of the proclamation of the gospel of the kingdom of God. It's my great privilege to come to you through this medium. And today I'm excited about what I'm going to say, although at the same time I may actually frown because of the nature of the news. What we will be discussing on today is how to enter the kingdom of God. How to enter the kingdom of God. And there are three key things I'm going to mention. Two are requirements. And the third one is the result. How can I enter the kingdom of God? Two key things. You have to repent. And you have to believe in Jesus. Hence being born again. And the result is that you become a new creation. A new creature in Christ Jesus. First, repent. We're going to be looking first in Matthew chapter 3. This reports the ministry of John the Baptist. And it says, In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And if you go down to verse 5, it says that people went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan confessing their sins they were baptized by John in the Jordan River they came confessing their sins because they had heard the message and the urgency of that message that they need to repent from their sins because the kingdom of heaven is near how near do you think we are today that you need to repent yes they were confessing their sins the things they were living and doing that were not pleasing to god they were confessing their immorality fornication adultery they were confessing their stealing lying cheating bribery they all were coming to john and confessing because he had preached to them repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and i am saying the same thing to you today repent for the kingdom of god is at hand and during his ministry he there were people who came to him as well and these were religious people these are the most dangerous people that you face even in the world today religious people who claim to know God, but their actions are different. They don't reflect the fact that they have repented or that they truly know God. And these people came to John as well. They were the religious leaders. And talk among these kinds of religious people were the Pharisees. These were people who studied the law. These were people who claimed that they followed the law. These were people who had made up a lot of traditions just to make sure that they obey the law but something was wrong with them they had religion without repentance and so when they were coming this is what it is said at beginning from verse 7 it says but when john saw many of the pharisees hypocrites and sadducees hypocrites coming to where he was baptizing he said to them you brood of vipers who want you to flee from the coming wrath produce fruit in keeping with repentance religion and i'm talking to you now who claims to know jesus who claims to go to church who is still living in their sins i am speaking to you john has no simple words for you he has harsh words for you he called this religious people this religious hypocrites a brood of vipers yes the kingdom of god is near and unless you repent you are going to face the wrath of god you ain't seen anything you are going to face the anger of god for rejecting his offer of salvation he told them produce fruit that proof that you have repented if you claim to go to church is there fruit in your life to prove that you have repented they came to him they were 
claiming that, oh, we are the children of Abraham and we are God's people. And you may be doing the same thing today. Oh, I go to church. I have been baptized. I do this. I sing in the choir. I do all these things. But the question I want to ask you is this. Have you truly repented? And you are you bearing the fruit of repentance in your life? Are you bearing the fruit of repentance in your life? So Jesus continued, uh, John the Baptist continued and said in verse 9 uh, and in verse 10, And do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you the truth, that God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Don't claim Christian heritage. Don't claim I was born in a Christian family. Don't claim I go to church. The question is, do you produce fruit in your life to show that you have repented from your sins? Do you manifest that? And so John warned the people, and I'm warning you the same. He said the axe was ten. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. You must manifest the fruit of repentance. You must show in your lifestyle that you have truly repented from your sins. And this must not and cannot be a hidden thing because the people who know you would say, yes, we can see a difference in your life. What happened? And you say, I believed in Jesus. I repented from our sin. That is why I am different. Because if you do not repent, the wrath of God will come upon you. And it will come. It is right at the corner. Eternal damnation will be yours. John the Baptist preached it. And when Jesus came in the scene, he cried saying, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I am crying to you saying, Repent now for the kingdom of God is at hand. It is right at the door. Everything that Jesus proclaimed, everything that the prophets proclaimed, everything that the apostles proclaimed that will happen before the end is happening and almost done. And Jesus had said that when you see these things, when you see this great distress in the world, when you see these wars and warmongering in the world, coupled with all these signs, you should understand that I am already at the door. And you need to watch. And the first step to watch for his coming is that you should repent from your sins. You should turn away. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. It is the kingdom of righteousness. It is the kingdom of abundance. It is the kingdom of eternal pleasures. It is the kingdom of eternal life. Where there will be no more crying, no more weeping, no more suffering, no more death. But life with God. That is the kingdom of God. But if you do not repent, you cannot enter that kingdom. You will remain in the kingdom of the devil and you will suffer you will gnash your teeth what is repentance anyway repentance means i read it here repentance means to change to change direction to turn around if you are going in this direction in your life which is a life of sinfulness to repent means you have to turn around and go the opposite way to turn around and go the opposite way you have to change. You have to change your habits. You have to change the way you think. You have to change your ways. You have to turn away from sin. And everything that you have been doing, that is not pleasing to God. And you must live a different way. You must produce, as we say. You must produce fruit to show that you have changed. You not only change, you have to surrender your life to Jesus. You have to accept the fact that God provided him as a sacrifice for your sins. To be your savior. 
to bring you out of the wickedness of this world, to bring you out of sin and bring you into the beautiful kingdom that he has been preparing. So you repent, you change your thoughts, your ways, everything. And you start following a new path. You believe in Jesus. So that's the first thing, how you can enter the kingdom of God. You must repent and then believe in Jesus. The Bible calls it, you must be born again. You must be born again. You must become a new person. We're going to reflect here in John chapter 3. And pay careful attention, please. Because I know that the word born again is thrown around in a lot of places. In most cases, it means what it means. In some cases, it really does not mean what it means. Because just like repentance, when you repent, you have to change. You cannot claim that you have repented and you are still doing the things that you used to do. What does it mean to be born again? In John chapter 3, a religious leader comes to Jesus. He is a Pharisee. He is a theologian. He is a pastor. He is a priest. He is a prophet. You name any of those people who claim to be religious leaders. Yes, this was one of them that came to Jesus. He came to Jesus at night. He didn't even come during the day because he didn't want people to see him. He comes to Jesus and he flatters Jesus and say, we perceive that you are a man from God for no one can do these things you're doing if God is not with him. And Jesus saw through his religious hypocrisy. He saw through his religious hypocrisy and he tells him, verily, verily, I say unto you, Nicodemus, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. He cannot understand the kingdom of God. And he was like, what? I am an old man. Do you mean I have to go back to my mother's womb and be born again? Certainly he did not understand the spiritual implication of what Jesus was saying that except a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so he thought about natural birth. And Jesus comes back to him in John 3 verse 5. Say, verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man is born of the water, of, of water and of the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What does that mean? The Bible is its best interpreter. He explains to us what does it mean to be born again. In verse 6, already here it says, Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. So you should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. Flesh gives birth to flesh. Nicodemus understood that. Yes, my mother gave birth to me. I'm a fleshly person. But you have to be born of the Spirit of God. You have to be born from heaven. You have to be born from above. God has to give birth to you. And it is only to you who is repenting from your sins. So the one who is repenting from your sins, if that's what you are contemplating to do now, when you repent from your sins and are placing your belief in Jesus, God is, is like God is giving you birth by his spirit so that you can be his child forever. In John chapter 1, beginning from 11 to 12, it said that Jesus came to his own people, but the people did not receive him. 
but to those who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the, the right to be called the children of God, who were born not according to the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but they are born of God. So you are born by your mother, and you are born in sin, and you grow up in sin, as you are sinning even right now. But you have to be born again of God, of the Spirit, to be a child of God. There is nothing else you can do to be a child of God. Baptism will not make you a child of God. Confirmation will not make you a child of God. Going to church will not make you a child of God. It is repentance and believing in Jesus and hence being born again that brings you into the kingdom of God. And so Jesus says this to Nicodemus. He's like, but I don't understand. He just said, like, you are a prof professor of theology, you are a priest, you are a pastor, you are a prophet, and you do not understand the things that you must be born again before you enter the kingdom of God? How can you be a teacher? How can you be a Christian if you do not know that you have to be born again? Well, how can you be a Christian? How can you be a teacher? Of the Bible and you are not born again of the Spirit of God there is nothing else in this world that can replace you to be born again in order to enter the kingdom of God that's why he says repent and believe except you are born again you cannot enter the kingdom of God Jesus goes on there in the conversation with Nicodemus and basically explains to him the good news the gospel most people who read the Bible know about John 3 16 he told him for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life Verse 17, he goes ahead and says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through him. Verse 18, he says, Whoever believes in Jesus is not condemned, but has passed from death unto life. But whoever does not believe is condemned already. If you have not yet believed in Jesus, there is a condemnation sentence hanging over you and this condemnation sentence will end in wrath and the punishment in eternal fire if you die in your unbelief or if Jesus returns and you have not been born again and you have not yet repented and believed in him and so Jesus says this, listen carefully, this is the condemnation. This is the condemnation that light has come into the world, but men love darkness because their deeds are evil. I want to thank God if you have listened up to this moment. The reason that people turn away from the gospel is because their deeds are evil and they don't want to change. It's because you love your fornication so much. It's because you love your adultery so much. It's because you love your gossiping so much. It's because you love your lying so much, your cheating, your bribery, and all those things that you say, no, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to repent. And if you don't repent then, it says, this is the condemnation. So verse 17 says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But if you don't accept that salvation, you are condemned already. And the reason you don't want to is because you don't want to come in the light, for Jesus is light. And this is my caution to you. Who may be claiming that you are born again and still living in your sins? And it can be very dangerous. 
Jesus says that the, the, uh, Matthew 6 verse 22 to 23 it says the eye is the lamp of the body if your eyes are good your whole body will be full of light but if your eyes are bad your whole body will be full of darkness if then the light within you is darkness how great is that darkness listen carefully okay if you claim like Nicodemus that you are a theologian, that you are a pastor, that you are a prophet, that you are a Christian, and you are not living and producing the fruit that you are a believer, then you actually have light in you that is manifesting as darkness. Do people see you in your lifestyle, in your speech, and in everything as someone who is actually born again? Because some people just like to just say that, oh, I'm born again. I'm a born again Christian. But do you live like someone who is born again? Nicodemus, he knew theology, but he was emitting darkness from his body because he was not transformed from the heart. It is the same with every religious leader today. Pastor, priest, prophet, or whoever who claims to teach the word of God. But who is not born again? Are you inside or outside the kingdom of God? Have you truly repented from your sins? Have you truly become a new, uh, have you truly been born again? How to enter the kingdom of God? Repent, confess your sins, and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. When these two things happen to you, the Bible says you have become a new creation. You have become a new creature. You are ready for the new creation that God is going to create as it is reported in Revelation chapter 21 and 22. There is a new world coming. There is a new age coming. There is a new civilization coming. And Jesus will be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and will make everything new but if you are not a new creature if you have not repented and are born again you cannot enter second corinthians 5 17 says that if anyone is in christ jesus he is a new creation behold all old things have gone and everything has become new so we say in repentance, therefore, you turn away from evil, you turn away from sinfulness, you believe in Jesus. Your life has changed. The Bible says the old things that you used to do have to go away. The old things that you used to do have to go away. Now you have become a new creation. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 21 to 24. Say, if so be that you have heard him, that's Jesus, and have been taught by him as the truth in Jesus is, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Yes, behold, all old things must go. If you have repented, you are born again, all old things must go. Because this old man, is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts of the flesh lust of the eyes desire for everything that is not yours would it be women or material possessions or men or material possessions say so you have to get rid of this always and then be renewed in the spirit of your mind that is what repentance brings it brings a change of mind. It brings a renewal of mind. It brings a new way of thinking. And that you put on the new man. You be a new person. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So we say you have to bring forth fruit to prove that you have repented. That you have become a new creature. The old life has to go. And everything that has to be new. Created to be like God. In all righteousness. And true holiness. 
31 years ago. I grew up in the church, was baptized in the church, but I had not come to that point in my life in which I could definitely say that the old things were gone and the new things had come. Confronted at that morning in Sunday school of who is a Christian, which I could not answer even though I was baptized and in the church, I cried to God and said, nothing has ever satisfied me in this world. I am found in a deep pool of sin. I want you to pull me out and make me your child. And God heard my prayer and transformed my life. It was history and continues to be history today that this person, this Alfred, who used to live this way from this time forward in his life, he became a new person. And I've been living as that new person now for 31 years. How about you? I want to invite you. If you do not know for sure that you are truly born again, that you have truly repented from your sins, that you can point to a time in your life where you said, away with the old and come with the new and with Jesus. Let today, let this minute be your minute. Let this be the day of salvation to you. So that you can become a new creation. So that you can belong to the kingdom of God. Both now and in the future when Jesus arrives. Do not let any sinfulness keep you out from the kingdom of God. This is the condemnation. That light has come into the world. But men love only darkness. But whoever believes in Jesus is not condemned. He has eternal life. He belongs to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Let this be your day. Go on your knees. Pray to God and cry to him to save you and repent from your sin. Because you know that unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God.